guys um, as promised yesterday let's do this a little topic called duan's retraction syndrome drs now what is duan's retraction syndrome uh, i'm just going to give you a very very brief outline about drs because just in case it comes in the exam tomorrow okay now duan's rs retraction syndrome uh, there are three types okay three types there is some deficit of movement now what is the deficit of movement it's very easy for you to remember i'll give you a very very easy clue to remember type 1 2 and 3 so we have type 1 2 and 3 so just count the number of days okay so type 1 there is an abduction deficit there is an abduction deficit so suppose there is a left drs left sided duans retraction syndrome the left eye will not abduct as simple as that and i just hope you know what is abduction if you know that then it life is simple now what is so there is only one d in abduction so abduction deficit type 2 is an abduction deficit you know abduction there are two d's abduction deficit so supposing there is a left type 2 drs so when the child or the patient is asked to look to the towards the right gaze okay so the left eye will not adapt all right so you count the two there are two d's so that is type 2 now what about type 3 there is both abduction and adaption deficit so totally how many d's are there in my now don't count the d in the deficit okay so it is one d in abduction two d is in adaption so it gives me 1 plus 2 3 all right so type 1 we have abduction deficit type 2 adaption deficit and type 3 abduction plus adaption deficit now the next thing is which is the most common type it is type 1 so which is the most common type 1 that is abduction deficit drs is the most common type of duan's retraction syndrome now um, what is that special feature we are always looking for that special feature in duan's retraction now what is retracting now there is a um, what do you call it retraction of the eyeball itself see when so when there is retraction of eyeball the eyeball sinks into the orbit it goes a little into the orbit so what happens to the lid the lid appears to cover more of the eyeball so it appears as if there is ptosis during that time or when there is ptosis what happens to the palpebral fissure eye see this is the eye this is your upper lid so this is like this now in a particular movement in which movement in adduction in adduction there is a decrease in the palpebral fissure height so the exposed portion of the eyeball is becomes low so this is palpebral fissure height what is palpebral fissure i have always told you palpebral means a lid so the fissure or the opening between the two lids is called as palpebral fissure now this is palpebral fissure height pfh palpebral fissure height now when the patient does an adduction movement there will be a decrease in palpebral fissure height why because the eyeball goes behind so the lid comes down a little bit so there is a decrease in palpebral fissure height this could be one of the options in your mcq now why this occurs now that also can be a potential mcq now what is that mcq it's based upon your concept of sherington's law of reciprocal inhibition what is sherington's law of reciprocal inhibition sherington's law of reciprocal inhibition now in adduction which is the muscle that is contracting now let's say this is my right eye okay i'm not I'm not drawing the left eye but now now when this eye moves inward okay now right medial rectus adduction means medial rectus now my right medial rectus is acting by law of reciprocal inhibition which should be antagonized the right lateral rectus should be ideally it should receive a reciprocal inhibition right now but now what happens in this case in this case what happens in duan's retraction syndrome the sherington's law of reciprocal inhibition does not occur so what happens the medial rectus also contracts and the lateral rectus also contracts so what is going to happen is going to pull the eyeball tight inside so the eyeball retracts so the 
lid appears to cover more of the eyeball resulting in decrease in palpebral fissure height so let me just show you what happens okay now let's say we have a left type 1 drs so left type 1 type 1 drs type 1 means only one d is there so there is a left abduction deficit so left abduction deficit so what happens when the when i ask this patient to look to the left look to the left this eye the left eye does not move because there is a abduction deficit and this eye moves okay so when we're talking about a left case this is how it looks now when i'm talking about a right case what is going to happen right case yes this lateral rectus is acting now look at the eye we will also have to look at the eyelid okay now the eyelid is like this okay eyelid is like this now right case what is happening my left eye has to attack my right eye has to attack left right eye is absolutely normal so no problem but what's happening here the sherrington's law is not acting so now there is an abnormal contraction of my lateral rectus also. My lateral rectus now the falls to the thumb that time. Now what it does when I want it to abduct, it doesn't abduct. But when I am doing an abduction, now falls to ki kam karrai, now it is trying to abduct. Now what is going to happen? It is trying to contract. So now although my medial rectus is normal, so the eyeball will move this side. Okay, it's only an abduction deficit. But what happens when both the medial rectus and lateral rectus are contracting? The eyeball retracts a little bit inside into the orbit, so the level of the eyelid comes down. Okay, the level of the eyelid comes down. Okay, so this is called as decrease in the palpebral fissure height. Now look at the palpebral fissure height here in left case, and look at the palpebral fissure height in the right case. So it has come down. So this is what I mean by decrease in palpebral fissure height in adduction okay so this is what happens in duan's retraction syndrome so duan's retraction syndrome basically could be a pictorial question they can ask you what are the types of duan's retraction syndrome i hope you can see that light reflection beyond the light reflection you can see what i picked in so um number one you talk about it as what are the types so type one type two type three type one one d so abduction deficit Type 2, two Ds are there, so abduction deficit. Abduction means you have two Ds, okay, A, D, D. Now type 3, it is both abduction and adduction deficit. So I have 1 D in abduction, 2 Ds in adduction, so totally it gives me 3 Ds, so that is type 3, DRS. Now the other thing in, uh, and the most common type of Duan's retraction syndrome is type 1, that is the abduction deficit. Now that is what you can see in what I have explained here, left type 1 DRS where there is a left abduction deficit, so the left eye abduction is not happening. So on a left gaze or a LIGO version, LIGO means left, version means a gaze, okay? A binocular movement. So in left gaze, the right eye is absolutely, the right medial rectus is absolutely normal, it's moving in, whereas this has an abduction deficit. So it's not moving, okay? Now apart from this movement deficit, there's also a characteristic finding in DRS, that is, there is a decrease in the palpebral fissure height. Now what is the palpebral fissure height? This exposed portion of the eyeball between the two leg margins, okay? Palpebral means eyelid and fissure means the opening. So there is a decrease in the palpebral fissure height as you can see on adduction. So when I do ask the patient to uh, look to the right, that is dextroversion. Now this eye is absolutely normal, it's going in, going out there. And the right, the left eye, if you see the medium rectus is absolutely normal, so it is adducting. But there is an abnormality in the innervation of the lateral rectus. So what is that abnormality? Uh, normally, the Sherrington's law of reciprocal inhibition acts on agonist and antagonist. So whenever my agonist, that is my, in this case, the left medial rectus gets a positive input, it's antagonist, that is the HC lateral lateral rectus, that is the left lateral rectus should get a negative input in the vision, reciprocal in the vision. That's the normal thing, but that's not happening here. So now the lateral rectus also contracts out of turn. When it is its turn, it doesn't contract, but out of turn, it is going to contract. So when both are going to contract, the eyeball falls behind or it retracts into the orbit. So what happens? The lid comes a little 
down now now it's just like a snail retracting into its shell right so the shell covers the whole animal so like that now when the eyeball retracts okay it gets inside there is going to be the eyeball apparently will look like it is falling down so there is a decrease in palpable fissure height okay so once you understand these concepts this is all that will be asked at your level in duan's retraction syndrome i hope that's uh, that makes this short topic clear okay see you guys in a bit bye bye